So are we all tired of ChatGPT yet? I hope not. What if I were to tell you that in 12 months time, you may never have to use your brain again when it comes to writing an essay or really doing any sort of critical thinking? How would you feel? Well, that may very well be a reality in the age of ChatGPT. And forget 12 months time, this is happening right now. In today's video, I'm going to show you exactly what I mean and how AI and ChatGPT could completely change the face of education and what it means to be a teacher, a student, or really anyone in the education space. All right, I'm going to type, write me a five paragraph essay on Macbeth. You know what? Wait a second. That's a good start, but a bit too simple, don't you think? Let's turn this up a notch. Write me a persuasive five paragraph essay on the danger of ambition in Macbeth and write it in an academic style with MLA formatting. So the AI is going to write this essay. And now let me read out the introduction written 100% by AI. In William Shakespeare's play, Macbeth, the danger of ambition is a recurring theme that ultimately leads to the downfall of the play's eponymous character. Macbeth's ambitious desire for power and status drive him to commit numerous heinous acts, including murder and betrayal, in order to achieve his goals. So at this stage, whether this is your first exposure to ChatGPT or whether you've seen it all over the news, you might be thinking to yourself, this is a revolution. Goodbye to the old five paragraph essay, goodbye to critical thinking between ChatGPT and Google, I'll never have to think again. Okay, so let's go back to Macbeth for a second. Remember, a free AI tool generated an entire essay within seconds. And that's really just scratching the surface. Okay, now watch this. ChatGPT, write me a lab report on the impact of angle on velocity. This is mind-blowing, if not mildly terrifying. Not only did it give me a title, but it gave me procedure, material, and even results. Talk about crazy. These results are quite frankly remarkable, and without a doubt, one of the worst things that can happen to students and schools. Wait, what? So the first massive problem this could cause for students is this. Hi mom. Yeah, I have to write a report for work. How do I do that again? Well, first you'll want to assess the goals of your report. So that's to increase efficiency and productivity, right? Now from there, you'll want to devise some way to effectively visualize your data, analyze all of this, then organize all of it, and then arrive at a conclusion so that you can then present that to your team. Now compare that to this. Hi Phoebe, do you remember how we're supposed to write that report for work? What? I don't know. Ugh, why does it matter anyway? I never really learned that. Do you want to go skating next week or not? So in my parents' generation, or in older generations in general, they had to learn how to do all of these things, and they had to remember it. So they had to calculate curves, how to write out reports, and they had to do all of this quote unquote the hard way. But our generation, say Gen Z, millennials, younger generations, well, we grew up with Google. So there are plenty of people out there who don't really know how to write a report properly without consulting the internet. So AI is like giving everyone a magic search button. On one hand, it's amazing, makes life a lot more convenient and easier. On the other hand, it can have some scary and potentially dangerous consequences. If people start relying on it too much, that's where we're going to run into massive problems. Why? Consider this. If we're constantly relying on a tool to do all of the work for us, we will never improve. We'll never be able to master or hone a craft or any particular skill. So the problem with that is we will forever remain beginners. And if you're thinking to yourself, well, none of this really affects me. I don't really write essays or reports. And even if I did, I'd never use anything except for my own brain. Well, let me tell you how this impacts all of us. But first is the next big problem. Remember our Macbeth essay from earlier? Well, it's not bad, but at best it's a start to a rough draft or maybe it could be a passing grade if you have a fairly lenient teacher. It's mostly informational, but it lacks nuance and deep analysis. There's also the issue of outdated information. ChatGPT as it stands is currently updated to about 2021. So what that means is it could potentially flood schools with more average or subpar pieces or worse outright incorrect information like in this video. This could be a major problem for anyone pursuing higher education, say a doctorate or maybe even a master's, or a profession that requires nuance and deep level analysis. Think about it. If you aren't preparing for these skills, if you're not developing these skills at an earlier age, it's going to be a lot more difficult to pursue those higher levels of education or to pursue those professions that require deep level analysis or nuance. Now, despite outdated information, that's not the biggest problem for students because despite these errors, AI is actually not harassed at generating basic pieces of writing. Now that can be scary because for a lot of students, when they start out in the earlier years, a lot of them build their communication skills and their writing skills based heavily on 
summary-based, simple pieces, simple paragraphs, and simple essays. And when this AI can research and write an entire paragraph, an entire piece in potentially seconds, and then you can get another AI to edit that. I just can't see this not creating a huge skill gap down the line in upper years when the stakes are much higher. You'll be robbed of the opportunity to learn. And if you and countless other students don't learn now, that means that somebody down the road, whether it's you, a business, a company, or somebody else, it'll be up to them to pick up the slack so that you can brush up on those soft skills or thinking skills that you didn't pick up earlier on. And you really can't sleep on soft skills. Soft skills are a big reason for why people are successful in their field, they're how businesses grow, and they're just a big part of your life in general. And consider this, I'm the first to call out the five paragraph essay. I am not a fan of it and I think there are way more relevant methods to learn analysis and critical thinking, but I digress. Regardless of the final product, there's a lot that can be said about the process of essay writing itself. Finding evidence, to analyzing that evidence, to connecting ideas, to deriving your own conclusions. You can learn a lot and practice your critical thinking skills through this process, not to mention what you learn about yourself, about life, and about the world. And this brings us to what I think is a glaring problem. If AI is doing all of the heavy lifting, meaning it's doing all of the research, all of the analysis, it's finding all of the examples, and it's connecting all of the dots, what does that leave for students? What does that mean in terms of students' analysis and critical thinking skills? And what does that mean for tomorrow's leaders, engineers, doctors, entrepreneurs, change makers, and really our world? I mean, this could really hit us all in the future, but especially on the communication, thinking, and analysis front. So with all of that said, that brings us to the critical question of, so what? Why does this matter? How does it affect you? And how do we solve these problems? Let me be the first to say that I'm no AI expert and I can't see the future. However, I'm more than happy to share what I think we can do and how I think this will impact school and the future. All right, so let's say that schools react to this rampant use of AI by introducing more in-class essays and more in-class presentations, for example. What does this mean for students? If you're a student, what that means is you'll probably need to get better at writing essays or presenting in class in a timed, very structured type of situation. Now, regardless of your situation, what this means is that it's going to become more important to develop and harness your own style, tone, unique perspective, and of course, your own critical analysis skills and your own thinking skills, because these are things that robots cannot touch. They're your skills to learn and to keep for life. And at the same time, I don't want to come off like I'm fighting tooth and nail against this AI tsunami, because quite frankly, it's worth considering all the good that this can do. Maybe I was too hasty to say that this could be the worst thing to happen to students. In What We Owe the Future by William McCaskill, he argues that considering the long-term future should be a crucial moral priority in today's world. So if we can positively impact trillions of lives that could exist in the far future, it might be best to embrace with caution the benefits that AI can bring. But for better or worse, it may potentially cause a massive change in the way that schools work forever. If you're freaking out at the possibility that this might increase the complexity and the difficulty for students, well, that's a fair concern. Teachers would be unwise not to implement more in-class essays, direct student conferences, passion projects, presentations, maybe even video essays as a way of preventing a horde of AI assignment submissions. I also wouldn't be surprised if they threw out the old school curriculum and grading system altogether and went with a completely new set of assignments to give AI a run for its money. Which, if this means ushering in a new era of more innovative, future-thinking schools, I highly support it, in case you were wondering. Or or maybe ChatGPT will gate this type of function and say it can't do this for you. Who knows? Yet another way to prepare for a potentially AI-driven future is to develop your own skills where AI can't compete yet. And that means you need to focus on three things. First, you need to find ways to make clear and unique connections between yourself, the world, and any text or media. I mean, AI is never going to write a personal essay about their personal experience with ambition and revenge, right? So the second skill you need to build is analysis and creativity in a way that's relevant to today's world. Now, AI can already analyze quote-unquote Shakespeare at least somewhat in a very rudimentary, very informational way. But when teachers and professors throw in specific lenses, schools of thought, or if you're writing on a totally new book, 
something fairly recent. That's where you'll find yourself in hot water if you haven't built those analysis skills previously. You would be double doomed if they do start ramping up in class essays again, by the way. Now, your third tool against AI, and it is a bit controversial, is using it without relying on it too heavily. Consider this. Say you're brainstorming for your next assignment. You've been sitting in front of a blank document. It's been 15, 20, 30, even 45 minutes, and nothing is coming to you. Well, it is possible to use AI to help brainstorm or generate a couple of starter ideas, but it stops at starter ideas. The moment you start relying on AI too heavily to do the thinking for you, that's when we get into the danger zone. But first, I'll admit that I struggled when I was deciding whether or not to make this video. On one hand, it seems that everyone and their mom is talking about ChatGPT. I couldn't very well ignore it. On the other hand, like anything else, like any technology, it could go terribly wrong. And since it doesn't really seem like stopping the tsunami is an option, all we can really do is proceed with caution. Thanks so much for tuning in. If you liked today's video and want more, check out this one. It's all about leveling up your study skills. Until next time.